All right, let's begin. Thank you everyone um, for coming tonight. I really appreciate it. I'm glad to know there are so many of you interested in learning about Tri-County. Uh, my name is Scott O'Brien, uh, the Head of Guidance and Admissions at Tri-County. And um, tonight I'm lucky to have Melissa Beckman with us, who's the Academic Coordinator. Um, and her and I will walk you through the offerings uh, at Tri-County. Um, this is our fourth presentation. We've had a presentation that many of you have already joined us for, um, talking about admissions, general information about the school, um, and last week was about the career uh, vocational programs that we offer. Um, and we are re-offering the admissions virtual session and the one on just general information about Tri-County. So if you have any friends or family or people that want to see it that didn't see it or if you weren't there for it, um, feel free to go to the Tri-County's website and register for that presentation or those presentations. And uh, I will turn it over to Melissa Beckman. Hi everybody, happy Monday night. Um, welcome to Tri-County and I hope between Scott and myself we can fill you in on all the information on academics and answer some questions at the end of the presentation that you might have. A little bit about myself. Um, I've been at Tri-County, this is my 24th year. I taught math here for 15 years. I taught everything from Algebra 1 to freshman at the college prep level all the way up to um, AP Calculus. So I enjoy all the academics here. This is my ninth year being the academic coordinator, being an administrator, and I think you're gonna get a lot out of this presentation and I think your child will get a lot out of our academics as well. So I'm gonna move along and we will talk about the presentation. So there we go. So as you can see from this slideshow, um, our academic programs are aligned to the Massachusetts curriculum frameworks. We follow the um, core um, subject areas that we teach. We have our English, math, science, and social studies. We have all different levels from um, AP, which really starts, we have one course in the sophomore level and then junior and senior is really where our AP classes come into play honors at every grade level and college prep as well and we also meet the needs of students who are on IEPs which are individualized education plans so any kind of course that you might have at a traditional school we have here at Tri-County as well this is a very daunting slide I'm going to let you talk a little bit about this it talks about um, our graduation requirements at Tri-County um, versus go out to um, a four-year college. So I'll let him fill you in on this. So um, Melissa and I work together on a lot of things, but this is one uh, critical component, uh, making sure our students have the academics that they need, not only to be well-rounded, but to graduate with um, the ability and the chance to be able to um, meet the requirements for the four-year colleges. Um, many of our students choose to go right into work. Um, some of our students choose to work and then go to college afterwards. Some, uh, about 60% of our students go right into college. Um, so we wanna make sure that we follow not only the Mass Core, which is the standard of Massachusetts uh, academics for a high school diploma, but we also look at this column here, which is this colored um, diagram, is the minimum requirements for grade 12 students to apply for one of the Massachusetts State Universities. So, and that includes schools like Bridgewater State University, uh, UMass, Amherst, um, Worcester State, all of the state universities have a minimum requirement to be uh, reviewed. Um, and these are the requirements. So as you can tell over the years, they've increased and that's what Melissa and I pay attention to every year to make sure our students meet those standards. So to be able to fit all of these academics into our students' schedules, we had to basically reformat the way we did things. Um, we also looked at our students, um, you know, the, the grading system we had as far as the quarters go. We had quarters and we had eight periods. Some of the academics were double blocks. We decided to change that to kind of make uh, a little more 
um, consistency throughout the four years that the students were at Tri-County. We decided to make five periods during an academic week um, in the traditional school year, which hopefully next year will be, um, the students will rotate periods. So they won't always have the first uh, period class first thing in the morning, and they won't always have the last class at the end of the day. This will help a lot when it comes to students who don't love to wake up early in the morning, and it'll help when, you know, students who are the athletes who might leave a few minutes early every day to get the bus um, to their competitions. Um, and not only that, but people like me who might um, like to eat lunch and be a little bit tired after lunch. So those teachers really appreciate and the students appreciate the change in the schedule each day so that, you know, they can be their best at different times of the day and have different classes. But not only that, but we changed it to trimesters. We felt this gave students a little bit more time and guidance counselors a little more time to work with students um, who maybe we report on middle midterm. We gave them enough time uh, to either bring their grades up or bring them up to where they want to be. Um, we will, um, one thing I forgot to mention, is we will have a question and answer session at the end. Um, so uh, sorry about that. We will um, allow you to post in the chat section um, and we'll answer any questions that people want to post in the chat portion of Zoom. Um, so these are the minimum requirements for the universities. At the top, you see the, the column that says English four years, math four years, science four years. So that is the graduation requirements at Tri-County. So um, when it says four years, it means that students will take one of these courses, courses each year for four years. Um, that satisfies our graduation requirements and it satisfies all of the college admissions requirements that I've ever seen. Um, and then on the right, what you see, the applicants enrolled in career vocational technical high school programs. This is a little snippet from uh, the contract. Um, it's basically the admissions handbook for the state university system. Um, and this is just the section solely talking about our students at Tri-County. So some people, there's a misconception that our students don't um, earn enough credit or, uh, you know, enter enough academic uh, program to get into the universities, and that's not true. Um, they even have a little caveat here for people who think, oh, because they don't offer foreign language, the students don't get in. Basically, what all of that uh, section says is that um, because our students go above and well beyond the requirements for first-year students to apply to the universities, um, each one of those components builds towards the requirement of foreign language and they, it basically replaces the requirement. So none of our students have issue with that. Um, this applies not just to the university system of Massachusetts, but most of the schools in New England and around. Now, um, we'll get to the foreign language piece in just a moment as uh, there's a lot more about that. Actually, I think that's probably the next slide. Um, but hopefully uh, that uh, basically is a quick uh, underlying um, uh, brush up of what it takes to get into one of the, the state universities. Um, our students, as I said, don't really have an issue with that. Um, but we do have some students, however, who'd like to potentially go to an Ivy League school or go to uh, a university outside of New England that maybe doesn't know Tri-County as well. Maybe they want to go abroad. Um, we've had students apply to colleges all over the country um, and world including Canada, and um, some of those schools will require a foreign language. Um, some of the top tier schools, if students apply to Boston College, um, if they apply to you know, MIT, if they apply to um, you know, the University of California system, they might require a foreign language. Um, so we do offer it. Um, and it's kind of the best situation possible where um, it's not a course that's offered during the day, um, each year it's a little bit different, but we try to offer Spanish 101 and 102 every semester. So when, we, when I say semester, I mean we go by the college's schedule. So usually the course starts mid to late September um, and then ends in December. And that could be Spanish 101. And then the student would sign up with me in December for 102, and that would begin in January and end in May. Um, then in that one year time slot, they would have six college credits, which um, usually fulfills their degree requirement if there's a foreign language requirement for a bachelor degree or an associate's. 
Um, but our students use this opportunity for admissions requirements, but also to learn a foreign language, which is very helpful in a lot of the trades, um, but also to prove to the colleges that they can be really successful in a college course. Because these courses are taught by a college professor. I am registering the students to be college students. Um, and the students have a permanent transcript at Bristol Community College that can be used to transfer to any college that they either apply to or go to. Now, the course is contracted, so that means Tri-County pays for the actual course itself. Um, and the book, which generally runs about $200, we actually pay for half of that. So students pay a $100 book fee, um, and that would be to get into Spanish 101. And if they're successful in Spanish 101, they don't have to pay anything. We use the same book, um, and I'll register them for Spanish 102. Um, and they can take it, uh, and we did it on purpose. Either students started late, um, or a student is an athlete and can't take it in one semester and have to do it in another semester. Students can take 101 in the spring, which is the one that starts in January, believe it or not. Um, and then they can take 101 the next, uh, 102 the next spring if they feel like they have to do that, if it, if it interferes with sports. But for the most part, our students are able to do sports and take Spanish at the same time. Our coaches are um, totally understanding of that. And our athletic director actually is one of our US history teachers and an AP US history teacher. So she is um, understanding of all of these requirements. Um, so yeah, that's Spanish 101. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. So I'm going to go a little bit through our different core subjects and talk a little bit about our offerings. Um, so I'm going to start in grade nine. So when your child comes in next year, they would start with English nine. They'd have a choice of honors or CP. So pretty much in ninth and 10th grade, there's not a lot of variety in options, but then as they get into 11th and 12th grade, we have a lot more choices. Grade 10, honors and CP. And then in grade 11, either honors or CP, and then we do offer an AP, language and composition. So that's a great course for students who really like to write, really like to read. Um, and then in grade 12, if your child wants to continue with the second AP course, they could take AP Literature and Composition. And if they didn't want to take a second one, or maybe they didn't take that AP in their junior year, there are still some other options as well. We have a humanities course, and that humanities course is cross-curricular. It's taught also as a humanities in history, so you're getting it from English and from a historical point of view, so you have to sign up for both. Um, and then we have a new course this year, which is extremely popular as a 12th grade elective. It's called Reading and Writing in Three Genres, and it's a college prep course as one as well. And it talks about poetry, drama, and short stories. So those are the three genres that it covers. And um, I've observed that class. Um, the teacher loves teaching it, and it's incredible. So those are our English offerings. Can I jump in just for one second? Yeah, go ahead. Um, just to explain a little bit, if people don't um, recognize or know what AP is, Advanced Placement, um, this is a very special curriculum set forth by the College Board, who are, you might recognize the name, they're the makers of the, the SAT exam. Um, they also created uh, a very much higher level course um, that has a very um, national standard uh, and requirements. And our students uh, have to complete work over the summer. It's that challenging. It has that much to it that they have to do that. Um, they work with teachers frequently. Sometimes they work on weekends. Sometimes they do evenings, study sessions. Um, but this all builds up to May when they take their AP exam. Uh, and if students score high enough, they will earn college credit, which is a, a great opportunity. Um, and this just adds to their transcripts. And depending on the college that the child applies to, um, those AP credits can transfer in and, and a lot of colleges are looking for some AP courses as well. The AP exam is on a scale of one to five and usually a three is where you start to earn credit depending on the college. So it is a great course to take and even if your child doesn't want those credits for college, just being in an advanced place course where you're learning like you would be in a college setting really that rigor is really great for your child to just experience at that level. 
So moving to math, um, in grade nine, we have four offerings. Um, so right now in middle school in grade eight, all eighth graders are supposed to successfully complete algebra one. But we know that we have 11 different sending towns and that's very different coming from all our towns. And so what we do is we give a placement test and we try to figure out what, where should these children be placed? Do they actually come in knowing algebra one? And some students don't know it as well as they need to to be successful, so we re-offer Algebra one at the college prep level. We want everyone to be successful. We want to make sure they're coming in with the skills they need, especially coming from the 11 different sending towns. So that is our, an offering that we give as Algebra one CP. If they really did well in Algebra one CP, but not well enough to get to Algebra two, we have an Algebra one honors, we have an Algebra two honors, and some students who you know are just superstars in math, we do offer an Algebra two trig honors, and those are the students who are going to be on our calculus, our AP calculus path. In grade ten, we have Geometry College Prep, Geometry honors, and then those students who are that Algebra two trig honors are now go to that pre-AP geometry honors class in grade 10. Once you get to grade 11 in math, um, you have a lot of different options. As you can see, you have algebra two, we have a trig analytic geometry course, both at the CP and honors level. We have algebra two trig at the honors level for juniors, and then a pre-calculus honors. So that top course is really those students who want to get to calculus. If you are not in that pre-calculus honors class in grade 11, but you still want to get to calculus in between junior and senior year, we offer a summer pre-calculus course, which is usually anywhere from six to 10 students who maybe weren't on the track to take calculus, but they want to. So we want to, we want to make sure we offer them what they want to take. So we've had about four or five years now, a summer pre-calculus course, which has given them the skills they need to get to that AP calculus level. Um, in grade tw 12, we have a foundations of math course, um, trigonometry, we have a CP stats, we also have an AP stats, so we have two advanced placement classes. Um, we have a pre-calculus honors, an intro to calc honors, and then the two AP classes, which are calculus and statistics. So we, are, we have a lot of different math offerings. Different colleges really like to look at the well-rounded student with different Math, statistics really just requires an algebra two background. So we have a lot of students who want to take an AP math course, but didn't do the rigor to get them to calculus. So that AP stats is a way to get them there. So we're very, we're very happy with all of our offerings in the math department. Moving on to science, we have biology, both the honors and CP level in grade nine. And we, this year for the first time, we moved to teaching physics at grade 10, both in the honors and the CP level. And that gets them to chemistry now in their junior year. And we are breaking it down into three different levels, an honors, a CP, and then a living by chemistry. So it, it all really depends on your child's track and their shop. We really try to bring a lot of shop into their academics to make it hands-on. There is a lot of chemistry in a lot of what they do, so we try to break it down for them. And then in grade 12, as you can see, there's a lot of different choices at the CP and honors level. Um, physics AP is our AP course in the sciences. Depending on their shop, depends on really what science they're gonna go into. We have a lot of our legal and protective students take forensics, a lot of our um, dental and medical students go into anatomy and physiology. A lot of our engineering students go into physics. So it really does depend. We, we have added a lot of these science electives based on the needs from um, our shop teachers telling us that certain colleges or certain programs really want to see these science offerings. Did you want to add anything about science, Mr. O'Brien? Nope. Uh, well, so like you said, um, once you get into senior year, um, our, our curriculum is really catered towards our students' interests. Um, our forensic science class actually started out as an experiment. Um, one of our teachers showed Melissa and I interest. Um, she did have a lot of the new legal students in her program, the criminal justice program we have. 
um, showing interest in forensics, um, and she created the curriculum for us. And there was so much interest in it the first year, we had to create about three or four sections when we thought we would have one. Um, and now we have honors and college prep. That's great. And then our history curriculum, we do two years of US history in grade nine and 10. Um, and then in grade 11, we do world history. So we do offer US history AP. We break that over two years because it's such a huge curriculum. So we start them in grade 10 and then they sit for the AP exam in grade 11. Um, next year, we are hoping to bring in another AP course because the students sit in grade 11 for that AP exam. Some of them are looking for more rigor in grade 12. They want another AP course. So we're, we're looking into human geography. Um, we're in the research stage right now. We have a teacher who's going for training and she's bringing us back a lot of information. Like I told you with the English course, we have that humanities, world history, which is the English and the history combined into one class um, split over those two subject areas. And then there are other social studies electives when they get to senior year as well. So right now for um, Mass Corps, they have to have two years of the US history and one of world history. So when they get done with that, senior year is really gonna be, what is it you're interested in? What is it you want to take? So those are our histories. We have a lot of electives, junior and senior year. Um, students have an opportunity to take electives. Freshman and sophomore year, they, they have to take PE and health and a course we have that's called um, student success. That is really a lot of about organizational skills, social emotional learning. They get some typing skills, um, how to do a lot of um, Word document, Excel, PowerPoint, things like that. It's, it's a lot of skills like that. But then when they are in junior and senior year, they get an elective each trimester. And so here's just some examples of all the different kinds we have from music to math electives to some different kind of history ones to English to PE. Um, and students really are enjoying having a lot of variety in their elective offerings. Some of them are new this year and we're getting some really good feedback on them. I'm very excited about it. MCAS, so one of the other hats I wear is MCAS. Um, as you know, it's a requirement, it's a state requirement that students pass MCAS to get their competency determination um, diploma when they graduate. It also helps with their scholarship opportunity for the John and Abigail Adams Scholarship, as well as the Copelic Scholarship as well. We, the new MCAS, we started testing a couple of years ago in 2018. Um, all grade 10 students will test in English and math, and our ninth graders test in biology. And we're very excited about the fact that grade nine will test biology, get it out of the way, and then in 10th grade, they just have two tests to get through. We do have a lot of different opportunities for students to prepare. If your student really isn't a math student, has a little trouble, struggles with math, we have a grade nine algebra support elective in addition to their math class they can take. That's a one trimester course we offer in the first trimester to give them a boost. Um, we also have grade 10 MCAS prep. That's another elective they would take in their second trimester to get them ready for the MCAS. Um, and that's in addition to their geometry course that they're taking as well. In addition to the supports during school for all three MCAS subjects, ELA, math and biology, we do offer review classes after school for two weeks of intense review right before the exam. So our goal is that students have everything they need to be successful um, before they take that test. We also have a homework center. Um, it runs Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Those are the days we have late buses. It's a great opportunity for your child to get their homework done while they're still at school. They can stay for one hour and take the 315 bus home. They can stay for two hours and take the 415 bus home. We do have certified teachers that work there for the first hour in all areas, English, math, history, and science. We have special ed teachers who work there. We have somebody who is in the computer center who works there. If they 
you know, maybe some students don't have computers at home or printers, so they like to get that work done here as well. And if your child isn't doing well, let's say they're, they have a D or an F in a subject, a guidance counselor or a teacher or even you as a parent can recommend that they stay in the homework center. Um, they'll be assigned to the homework center. And then you kind of make a pact with the homework center and guidance saying that they're going to stay and they're going to do work one day a week, two days a week, even three days a week. Um, but if your child's doing fine, sometimes they just want to go on their own. They just want to get it done. Maybe they have a late practice at four and they want to get all their work done before they go to practice, or they just want to get it done before they come home. So it's a great place to go to get their work done. Um, kids really like the homework center. So, so that's pretty much a little overview of all the academics that we have here. Um, you know, Tri-County is a really special place. Obviously, I wouldn't have been here for 24 years if I didn't think so. We really do our best to kind of mesh academics with vocational and vice versa. Um, we try to show them how shop is related to all their academics and academics is in their shop. It's a, it's a great atmosphere for everybody. So I really hope you've enjoyed the presentations you've been to before and the ones coming up and um, if you have any questions I'd be happy to answer them. All right thank you so much. Um, there is a chat window open um, if people want to enter any questions in there. I have that coming to me um, privately so um, feel free to enter any questions you might have. Uh, thank you everybody for joining us tonight and spending time with us and um, if you are not staying for the questions, um, have a wonderful Thanksgiving, enjoy, be safe. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to email myself as well. I'm gonna put my email in the chat to everyone. And I'll hang around for a little bit to see if there's any follow-up questions and um, we will uh, hang out and see who asks a question and if they don't then we'll end the night. Um, so I have a few questions coming in. Uh, is Spanish the only foreign language offered? So we do have a close partnership with Bristol Community College who offer us credits each year or tokens for credits, um, meaning I'm able to uh, help students who want to take Psychology 101, English 101, or Sign Language, American Sign Language, which counts as a foreign language um, for college admissions, um, or just for fun, or for somebody to use uh, in their career, which absolutely they can. Um, there are also multiple other foreign languages that are offered at the community college, and the school does have a satellite campus in Attleboro, um, and they also teach remotely very frequently, especially now. I'm sure a lot of those courses will be offered remotely. Um, so those courses would be offered to students who want to try a different foreign language. How are you handling virtual classes? Um, I mean, I could just start the answer and then we'll see you can finish. But um, I think our school was probably one of the most well prepared. Um, we have been using a virtual platform for long before COVID hit um, and we really probably were one of the first schools to get up and running after everything shut down. Um, and Melissa, you can probably talk more about that. So all of our classes um, have a time frame, the five classes a day for academics. And um, teachers have the period they're on. Um, we are not rotating our schedule this year because of COVID, we decided that while we're remote, it would be best if period one was always period one, period two was always period two. So our periods are running right now um, for 45 minutes. And then the last 15 minutes, teachers can either use that time to conference with students individually, or they can get students working on stuff, but it's a chance for them to, you know, some kids just, you know, take a break in between their first class and their next class and moving on like that. We have trained our teachers on a multitude of platforms. Um, we're using Google Meet. 
they've had PD, they have another PD day coming up um, in a couple of weeks uh, where they're using Jamboard and Edpuzzle and Screencast-O-Matic and um, Pear Deck. And I've observed about 20 of my teachers so far, still working through them all. And it blows me away how amazing that they have figured all of this stuff out and they're able to you know, watch their classes and teach and really do everything they need to do to make it seem like they're actually in the classroom. Obviously they wanna be in the classroom, but they can't be right now. Um, they're doing a great job with everything they have and they've learned all these new technologies as fast as they possibly could. They mm. do at least two synchronous classes a day. Um, excuse me. Um, but most of my teachers are on every day with all of their students for the whole period. Um, sometimes they might get on, give the assignment, and then just kind of monitor what they're doing or, or watch over them. But we do have remote protocols that they adhere to that are on our website that make sure that, you know, the students always know what they're doing and they're adhering to, to make everything, you know, safe and secure as well. Um, but like I and said, not to mention that, but just like in a traditional school year, our teachers stay after school every day for a half an hour, but they all also have extra help days where they stay after for an hour. Uh, that goes for all of our teachers. So students can stay with them. They can go to the library, whatever is best for them. Uh, same thing with the virtual learning. We have uh, extra help days built in uh, in teacher help days. Right. Right, and that's a good point to bring up. So every teacher does have one extra help day a week, at least, most stay longer than that. Virtual teachers still have an extra help day, plus they also have office hours every day. So if a student really was struggling, they could come back that day for office hours to make up um, you know, what they missed or kind of learn you know, where they were struggling. So thank you for reminding me about that. So the one thing we say very frequently is that our students earn a traditional high school diploma. That's what we're, we're doing. We're, we're giving them that um, and everything else is extra. The vocational career programs are as if they're getting a whole nother education on top of this and we intermingle them because we're teaching them how to apply the academics into their vocation, into their career program. Um, and we find that really important that there's also some of that going back into the academics as well. A lot of teachers tie what the students are doing in their programs into their academics and vice versa. Are there any other questions? All right, doesn't look like it. So I just wanna thank everybody again. Um, take care and we will be in touch soon. Uh, don't forget to fill out your application. Applications are not bonding. They are just simply letting us know you're interested we will take it from there and complete the rest of the application and we'll send you an email requesting you sign up for an interview. Um, we'll do that over Zoom with your child. Um, 10 question interview with a guidance counselor. We'll make it nice and simple. You'll fill that uh, the calendar out telling us when you want to do it. And that's the whole application. Once you finish it, we'll request the documents from the middle school. Um, and that's it. We will send out um, admission decisions in April. If you apply by December, um, uh, by the end of December, uh, that would be great. Um, if anyone needs any help or have any questions about that, you can join us at um, one of the next virtual info sessions on admissions, or you can send me an email. All right, everyone, have a great night. Thank you, Ms. Beckman. Bye. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us.